thank you for your support of our media campaign the other day, which publicized the photos. I thank you very, very much for the support that the media provided us on that. It was phenomenal, and I thank each and every one of you tonight. Thank you. Well, some of the coverage clearly was outstanding. Some of the reports leading up to Friday's arrest have come under fire. Let's talk about it with our News Watch panel today. Jim Pinkerton is a contributing editor and writer for the American Conservative Magazine. Alan Colmes is host of the Alan Colmes Radio Show and author of Thank the Liberals for Saving America. Let's get a grade from each of you as to how the media generally did in covering the tragedies of this week. Jim, let's start with you. I'll give, I'll give them a B. Uh, I think that, that there was plenty of inaccuracies, but it was an important story, and the media covered it Im importantly. Alan? I agree with Jim. Probably a B. Certainly not an A. And uh, it's, a, it's very tough and an ever-changing, breaking story with so much chaos to always get everything right. Uh, let's take a look at some of what was uh, gotten wrong. In the early reporting, uh, there were stories about how two unexploded bombs had been found there alongside the marathon course. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, I believe, said there were five unexploded bombs found along the course. Uh, CNN reported that uh, there had been a suspect arrested early on, I believe it was on uh, uh, Thursday, when, when that hadn't happened at all, and went on to compound that by, by saying that the suspect arrested was a dark-skinned male. What about some of that, Jim? Well, you're right. I mean, here, here we are looking at the New York Times, and there's a, 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 a CNN right there, a big article about them, and others, in, in fairness. But I think that, look, that lots and lots of mistakes. A B overall grade does, allows for plenty of Fs. And, for example, Andrew Carell at, at Mediaite did his 10 worst media reactions uh, uh, to the Boston Marathon bombing. And because we only have a limited amount of time, I'll select a few. Uh, Chris Matthews blaming it on, on the right wing. Uh, from MSNBC, Luke Russert from NBC uh, saying, well, you know, I was at a baseball game one time and I thought about the, you know, about his father, I mean, all, all the nepotism coming through and then makes me think about the Patriot Day and uh, IRS Day and so on. I mean, it just, and, and it, it ends with speculating on possible link. Well, that's really helpful to be speculating on a, on a story this important. Uh, then we get on to Nick Kristoff from the New York Times and, of course, not last but not least, or definitely least, uh, Michael Moore, uh, uh, who also said that obviously has something to do with uh, Paying your taxes. Hey, Jim, I noticed uh, you left out all the conservatives on that list, like <laughs> Alex Jones, who said false flag. I mean, you only, you only chose the liberals, right? Of no, all the Alex, people on Jones, that list. <laughs> Alex Jones is, was on the list, too. You're right. I mean, there, 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 there's lots of people on the list, uh, uh, but these are the ones that you, probably You chose the left, I understand. Okay. Right. <laughs> In this era of cell phones and, you know, everybody's a videographer with their iPhone or whatever, Instagram accounts, Twitter, and so forth, information is moving faster than ever. Do journalists have to be more uh, careful than ever, Alan, in, you know, because so much is flying yeah. at us so well, I think you make a very good point. With cell phones, with Twitter, with Facebook, you're now, uh, mainstream media is now competing with the social media, and it's easier. If you get it wrong on social media, nobody says anything. You get it wrong on CNN or what is considered to be a major news outlet, then, of course, all hell breaks loose. So, yes, uh, the media landscape has changed because of the digital world. And it's more important to be right than to be first, especially when you're going to talk about dark-skinned people or Saudis that have nothing to do with this. And you are potentially putting lives in danger by misidentifying who the culprit is. We also on, on Fox got it wrong at first saying that, you know, um, that, that a suspect had been arrested on Wednesday. Turned out not to be the case. How does that happen, though, Jim? I mean, there were police, you know, authorities out there giving this information out. How does it happen that they get it so wrong? I mean, that, that is a question, you know, to be resolved and studied and chronicled by, you know, journalistic experts and, you know, and so on for, for years and years to come. You're, you're in, a, in a deep journalistic dilemma when a member of the police department tells you something and it turns out to be, turns out to be wrong. You've got you to know, sometimes just trust him. For example, uh, uh, you know, the John King at CNN, I don't really think he meant in anything bad faith. I think he was told what he was told. Yeah. It just turned out to be wrong. Uh, um, I guess that's why you have to go back to Journalism 101 and say, listen, just because one person told me, I still yeah. have to see some better proof than just somebody say so. Generally, right. you want a second source. That's, that's the key. Alan Combs, Jim Pinkerton. Thank you. Good discussion. Thank you.